Hi, I'm Matthew from Workshop Heaven. Um, today I'm just going to explain a little bit about saw sharpening and what the various angles that you hold the file at to the work, uh, what differences those make to, to how the saw works. Um, to start with, we'll look at uh, rake, which is the angle of the the front of the tooth. So if the saw file is presented to the, the saw blade like this, you're going to end up with a, a vertical front on the tooth. If it's presented like this, you're going to end up with a, a rearward sloping front face on the tooth, which will give you a smoother cut. Um, the more aggressive zero rake is generally used for rip saws, and then a negative rake is used for crosscut saws. Um, this isn't the file I'm going to use for filing the saw by the way, it's just a nice big one to, to use to show you what I'm talking about. Um, the next one is fleam, which is a lovely word. Uh, that is the angle of the file relative to the saw blade in this direction. So for a crosscut saw you would always have uh, some degree of fleam that's the, the sort of definition of, of what a crosscut saw is. That creates a, a sharp edge on one side of the tooth. So the teeth pointing away from me as I'm looking for, at, the, at the saw blade will have uh, a sharp edge on the outside of them. Then when we come back and file every other tooth from the other side we'll create a sharp edge on the outside of all the alternate teeth. Um, for a, a rip saw, you want a row of flat chisel tips because you're scraping along the grain of the wood rather than trying to cut through the fibres. So for that we would use zero fleam, so we'd just be filing straight across like this. And for that you can just go along the entire saw, you don't need to turn it around and do it from both sides. Um, the last angle that makes a difference is slope, which is this angle to the saw. So that's zero slope, that's maybe 10 degrees of slope, that's maybe 20 degrees of slope. Um, a little bit of slope helps because it gives the gullets more space to clear the waste so that the sawdust doesn't build up between the teeth and prevent the saw from cutting. Um, if you have too much then that does become a problem because the saw will start to, to tear at the timber rather than just sliding smoothly through it. So a little bit of slope is good too much and, and you'll lose the smoothness of the cut. Right, so just to give you a bit of a, an idea of how that looks in practice, um, I'll just put a little bit of wax on the file. This is a very smooth file and I'm just literally nipping the tops off all of the teeth just to very lightly dress them and make sure that they're all even in height. Same again, a little bit of wax on the file helps it slide nice and smoothly. Now this saw is currently uh, file rip um, and I'm going to alter that to cross cut. So I rest my, my saw file in the first tooth I'm going to give it a little bit of slope, quite a lot of fleam, maybe 30 degrees, and then the top of the, the file tells me a lot about what's going on on the bottom of it. So for a crosscut tooth, I'll keep the top of the file flat. Uh, if I was doing a rip tooth, I'd be looking to keep this, the side, the opposite side, uh, vertical. So side vertical for ripping, top flat for crosscut. And then just taking old teeth and you do exactly the same action on every tooth, or every other tooth in this case. Um, it's important to always make sure that your stroke is identical and that it's smooth 
and that way you end up with exactly the same thing all the way along the blade and your saw will cut more efficiently. Okay, quick word about the, the saw vise that we're holding this in. Um, it's basically two bits of hardwood, nice thick sturdy hardwood with a block in the bottom. That's all screwed together. Uh, and then we've got two softwood jaws mounted in the top of it, which A, will be less likely to cause damage to your um, saw blade or the file or anything else that they come into contact with. So it's nice soft squidgy wood. Um, and B, they're easy to replace. That lot just screws together, it's clamped up in the vise, and then a couple of clamps just to hold it in place. These are excellent um, lever action clamps, save a lot of time. Um, and that's about it. Once we finish going along every alternate tooth this way, we'll turn the saw around or turn the whole vise around, um, and then do the alternate teeth the other way. Thanks very much for watching.